I know it's cold, but throughout the month of January, look up at the night sky, especially just after sunset, and you'll be seeing a six planet alignment. I'm 13 News Meteorologist Matt Standards. January is the Midwest's cloudiest month of the year, but if you can get some clear skies right after sunset, you should be able to see six uh, planets. Some you may need a telescope and some you'll be able to see with your eye. The best days to see when you're just after sunset and they're going to be all the closest together would be January 17th through the 18th. You'll still see it days after and days before, but the alignment may change just a little bit. They may spread out a little bit. It may be harder to see one off in the horizon compared to another, but it'll be up there. How rare is one of these planet alignments really, by the way, let's go into some of the details. So a two to four planet alignment, they're pretty common. We actually get several of those throughout the year or, or one of those conjunctions where you've got two planets really close together. In fact, we'll have one of those inside the alignment coming up for, for January 17th and 18th. But those are really common. A six planet alignment doesn't happen every year, but it's not, so it's more rare, but it's not rare overall. A seven plan, uh, planet alignment is definitely a little bit more rare. However, in the month of February, 2025, so coming up next, we will have a seven planet alignment there at the end of the month, and that will take place right after sunset as well. So once you can get the sunlight out of the way, maybe still a little bit of that, uh, that dusk still out there, you should have a pretty good view of seven planets. But the six planet up first for January, kind of getting us all prepared. And you remember all those jingles that you learned there in grade school with all the planets? Of course, we got Mercury and Venus here on Earth, and then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and maybe Pluto. Pluto is considered, of course, that dwarf planet. I was in grade school when that changed. Still not over that 2006 change. Uh, all the textbooks were wrong all of a sudden, so uh, that was kind of a crazy time. This is coming in from NASA. This is kind of a rough scale. You can see the difference in sizes of planets. Jupiter's just massive, and then look at these rings on, on Saturn. However, these planets, of course, way out, so some of them may be bright, and some of them, even though they're a lot larger than us or larger than some of our closest planets, they are harder to see. So which planets are we going to see during the sixth planet alignment? That's every single one except you minus one. So if we take Pluto out of the equation, we've got eight planets in our solar system. You exclude Earth because we're looking from Earth. Seven is the max. So six is just one less. So for this alignment, you can see Mercury goes away. Of course, Pluto's gone because we're not considering a planet right now. You can see Mars and uh, you can see Venus and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and, and Neptune. So it's gonna be really cool. So let's talk about the, the arrangement right now with the solar system. Got the sun in the middle. Here we are on Earth. So when we get to the dark side, as soon as sun sets, we're kind of right here, looking to the uh, south and uh, east, kind of away, what you'll see is Mars, when you look up at the sky, kind of, and I'll show you the map here in just a second, but when you're looking more towards the kind of the south and eastern sky, you should be able to see Mars over to what would be your left. And then you'll see Jupiter, Uranus, there's Neptune, and there's Saturn. There's Venus way on the right as well. That one kind of gets close to, to Saturn in our angle. But everything's kind of on the same side except for Mercury. That changes in February. Everything should be in our field of view for that nighttime sky. And so that gives us the seven planets for February. But for January, Mercury is hiding on the other side of the sun. Scork, we can't see it. Now during the day, maybe if you had a power enough uh, of telescope or something, maybe you could see it. But the sun is definitely blocking Mercury for now, but that'll change. So we're looking at the night sky. We're looking towards these planets. What will it look like? We made this visual representation. I'll step to the side for just a moment. So just after sunset, of course, the sun is setting here in January in that southwestern sky. So you'll still see a little bit of light as you look due south, but towards the east, it should be, should be dark. So when we're looking at this landscape, you can see Mars there on the left, looking more towards the east. And there's Jupiter and uh, Uranus and Neptune. And then Saturn and Venus are kind of in conjunction. They're going to be really close together. Now, when we say alignment, depending on what latitude you are on Earth, 
you kind of have a different display because we're tilted, right? So this is kind of more for a northern hemisphere look at what it would probably look like from our eyes, maybe a latitude like Indianapolis, Chicago, Louisville. So, so there towards the Midwest and all the way to New York City, kind of that latitude is roughly what this may look like. You'll be able to see Mars. You'll be able to see Jupiter. The ones that we have a circle around, you probably won't be able to see with your eye. You're going to need a telescope for that. And I'll show you kind of on some magnitudes here. But we have that circled, but it would be about here. So it'd be just to the kind of right and up from Jupiter, just from our perspective. Neptune would also be one of those, even though it's a giant planet, it's just so far away that it's, you can't see it with uh, your unaided eye. But you should be able to see Venus really well. And Saturn's closer to the edge there, but you may be still able to see. You gotta squint maybe. If you need your glasses, get them out. But those two will be really close together. If you can find Venus, you can find Mars, those would be the two easiest. Jupiter should be next. Saturn a little bit tougher. So four of them will definitely be visible. But this black line, kind of this curve, is called an ecliptic. So from our perspective in the northern hemisphere, it'll look more like an arc because you're kind of looking off to the plane of where all the, the planets lie as they're going in orbit around the sun. So it will look a little bit more like an arc, which is still, we would call this an alignment. Now, like we talked about, this happens, you know, it might not happen every year, but it does happen uh, fairly often. It's not rare, but to get them all really close together, that's pretty rare. So this view, you know, it looks like it's not very wide, but this is south and this all the way to the east, and we have a little extra room on both sides. So if you were actually standing out there, it'd be a pretty wide view that you're kind of looking. They're not going to be all together, but sometimes they are really close together. Now that is rare. When it comes to ancient civilizations too, when they would look up and, and see alignments, you know, it could be a prophecy or an omen, maybe bad or, or maybe good, or maybe it's tied to a natural disaster. If they've seen alignment and then something bad happened, a lot of times maybe the alignment would be blamed or or uh, they had to report why is this happening uh, to the ruler and they could maybe say the alignment was, was affecting things too. The Babylonians, so about 185 BC, wrote down an alignment of all seven planets that they could see, um, all the planets that they could actually see, were all really close together when they're looking. And so that would make it really rare to see. It wouldn't be all seven, but oh, well, they, they could see with their unaided eye. All together would be really, really tough. Uh, that would be rare, but this one, not so rare. So when it comes to how bright or, or dim something is, we use a magnitude, and for every magnitude, you know, one change in magnitude, it could be 2.5 times brighter or, or dimmer. So when we're looking at things, you know, this is the Hubble uh, telescope. It can see things, you know, 25 or, or a little bit greater in terms of that magnitude. That's really, really dim. For our unaided eye, six is kind of that magic number. Now, for some folks, it may be more like four or five for uh, you need to be a little bit brighter for you to see it. But six with the unaided eye would be the max that the human eye could see. The North Star somewhere in there, two to three for magnitude. A lot of these planets are anywhere from about six, five or six, to about negative four. So we're kind of in this range that we can see it. The moon itself is at you know negative 12 or so for its magnitude for a full moon. And then we're beyond a negative 25 for the sun itself. That's of course really bright. So hopefully this kind of puts it in perspective. These planets that we can see, the four that we can actually see are kind of in here. And then you've got uh, there towards Neptune and Uranus, just Uranus just after five, six, seven, and eight. So. That makes it a little bit tougher. That's where you're going to need a telescope. So what would it actually look like? Roughly, visualization. You got Mars, you got Jupiter, you got Saturn, and you got Venus. So something that we'll be looking forward to in the month of January. But you're thinking, Matt, this is only six. I want a seven. Just wait. February 2025. They're at the end of the month. I believe it's right, right at the end there. February 28th is kind of the max of what we're thinking. I believe that's NASA's kind of pinpoint for the seven planet alignment. Now it's usually not just one night, you got some buffer on each side, 
but to get them all the closest together for us for January would be January 17th and 18th, and then I believe February 28th for that seven planet alignment. Make sure you look up at the sky. No, it's cold. It's the coldest time of the year. It's also the cloudiest time of the year, but if you can get the clouds to clear out, you might have a pretty good view of the planetary alignment. We'll see you next time.